This short animated video explains how to perform hypothesis testing. So we will look at four different cases. First, how to perform hypothesis testing for single population mean where sigma is known. Second case, we will take how to perform hypothesis testing for single population mean where sigma is unknown. Third case, how to perform hypothesis testing for single population proportion. And finally, we look at how to perform hypothesis testing for population variance. So if you want to know more about what is hypothesis testing, you can check out my last video. I will share the link in the description below as well. So without wasting any further time, let's start our today's topic. Now let us look at what are the steps that are involved in hypothesis testing. Step number one, state the null hypothesis and the alternate hypothesis. Then we need to define the level of significance alpha. Then determine the rejection region. Then calculate the test statistics and compare it with the critical value. Finally, we state the conclusion. So the conclusion will be either we reject the null hypothesis or we fail to reject the null hypothesis. Now let us apply all these steps in different examples one by one. So let's take the first case hypothesis testing for single population mean. So the case we have is vendor claims that average weight of box is 1.84 kg. Customer randomly chooses 64 parts and finds the sample weight as 1.88 kg. Suppose the population standard deviation is 0.3 kg and we use the alpha as or a level of significance at 0.05 and then test for hypothesis that the true mean of shipment is 1.84 kg or not. So in this case, the population standard deviation is given to us at 0.3 kg. But we don't have any indication whether the true mean is less than 1.84 or greater than 1.84. So as a first step, we will first state the alternate and the null hypothesis. So our null hypothesis will be mu equal to 1.84 kg. And alternate would be mu is not equal to 1.84 kg. Because that is what is given in the case. So this is a two-tailed test. So we have alpha equal to 0.05. So that is where divided by 2, we get 0.025. Now we need to calculate Z critical value. That is Z alpha by 2. That is Z 0.025. Now let's plot this in the graph in the form of a normal distribution curve. We define our rejection areas and anything which falls which is less than this area or greater than this area will be rejected. That is, we reject the null hypothesis. And if it falls in this area, we will fail to reject the null hypothesis. Now let's come back to Z critical value. For Z equal to 0 0.025, we will calculate this from Z table. For that, we first subtract 1 minus alpha by 2. That is 1 minus 0 0.025. So we get 0.975. Now we will find this value of 0.975 in the Z table. Let us look at how do we find it. This is our Z table. So we have to find that area under the curve. So that is the 0.975 and it is coming from 1.9 in the horizontal and 0 0.06 in the vertical. So we combined that is 1.96. That is the Z critical value. So we place all these Z critical value on both minus 1.96 and plus 1.96 since it is a two tail test. Now we will calculate the Z calculated value. With the formula is X bar minus mu by sigma by under root n. Now this Z calculated value if it lies between these two values that is greater than 1.96 and less than 1.96 then we will fail to reject the null hypothesis. Let's see. 1.88 that is x bar minus mu 1.84 divided by 0.3 divided by under root 64. So we come to z calculated as 1.07. 1.07 is 
that is falling in between 1.96 and 1 minus 1.96. So we came to conclusion that we failed to reject the null hypothesis because our critical value or the calculated value that we have calculated is falling in the region which is failed to reject the null hypothesis. So there is a insufficient evidence to conclude that true mean of weight of shipment is not 1.84. Let's take another example for hypothesis testing for single population mean where the sample standard deviation is given. Machine produces part with mean length of 4.125 mm. Customer randomly chooses 20 part and find the sample length as 4.12 mm. And here the sample standard deviation is given of 0.008 mm. And with alpha equal to 0.1, we determine whether the length of mean length has decreased. So we first formulate the null hypothesis that mu equal to 4.125. And then we formulate the our alternate hypothesis that mu is less than 4.125. That is from coming from where the mean length has decreased. With alpha of 0.1, that is the level of significance. You need to first find the t critical value that is t alpha and n minus 1. Let's plot this in the graph. We have a normal distribution curve. We have to define the critical value. So, since it is a left tail test because it is only one region and it is the mu value is less than 4.125. Now, let's come back to if it falls in this region, we have to reject the null hypothesis. If it falls in this region, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. So now we come back to T critical value. So T is 0 0.1, which is coming from alpha level of significance, and n minus 1 is 20 parts. There are sample that we have drawn minus 1. So we get 19. Let's find this value of T 0 0.119 from the T table. So this is a T table. Uh, on the top, you will see two rows, one tail and two tailed. For so this is a one tail test. So we look at the t point one value here. This is the point one value of t, and we need to find the degree of freedom nine. So we look at nine in the x-axis. At a common intersection, we have one point three two eight. That is the t critical value. So we'll plot this in the graph. Since it is a left tail test, it will be negative. Next, we will plot the t calculated x bar minus mu divided by sample standard division divided by under root n. We put all the values, we get t calculated as minus 2.8. Now, if you plot this minus 2.8 in the graph, it comes around this in the reje rejection region. So, looking at this, we can conclude that we reject the null hypothesis at 0.1 level of significance. There is a sufficient evidence to indicate that the average length of part has decreased. Now, let's take a different case for hypothesis testing for single population proportion. Billing statement in the particular hotel has some error, and there was an error of 15%. Out of 1000 billing statements, they were randomly selected, contain 102 error. We use the alpha of 0.1 and determine whether the proportion of the billing statement is less than 15% or not. So this is a proportional case. So first let's formulate the null and alternate hypothesis. So null will be p equal to 0.15. That is the error 15%, 15 divided by 100, 0.15. Our alternate would be that P is less than 0.15 because that is coming from to determine whether the proportion of billing is less than 15%. We use alpha as 0.1. Now we need to calculate the P hat value. For, for that, let's first plot the graph. Define our rejection region since it is a left tail test. P is less than 0.15. So if it falls in this region, reject the null hypothesis. If it falls in this region, fails to reject the null hypothesis and we first calculate the p hat p hat is x divided by n that is 102 errors that we have out of the thousand billing statements so we get p hat as 0 0.102 now we need to calculate z critical z alpha alpha we have 0 0.1 so for z 0 0.1 we go to z table for that first we need to uh, subtract this 0 0.1 from 1 
so that is 1 minus 0.2 so we get 0.9 so we need to find this 0.9 value in that z table the closest that we have is this 0.8997 which is a combination of 1.28 1.2 on the vertical x axis and 0.8 on the y axis so we get 1.28 as z critical value now since it is a left tail test so we'll keep it as negative now we need to calculate what is the z uh, stat value so formula is p hat minus p naught divided by under root of p naught into 1 minus p naught divided by n let's put this value and we get z stat as 4.25 which falls somewhere here in the rejection region now since this 4.25 is less than 1 minus 1 1.28 so we would reject the null hypothesis in the favor of alternate at 0.1 level of significance so there is a sufficient evidence to conclude that the true percentage of statement error is less than 15 percent here let's take the last case for hypothesis testing for population variance so the case is a machine is running with variance of 6.25 for some critical dimension so after improving the process sample of 13 were drawn randomly and the new variance is 6.82 so with alpha as 0.05 determine whether the new process variance has increased so this is the right tail test because it talks about whether the process has increased in the previous case it was a left tail test let's first formulate the null hypothesis so my variance is 6.25 my alternate uh, hypothesis would be variance is greater than 6.25 with alpha is 0.05 we need to first calculate the chi square critical value which is chi by alpha into alpha and minus 1 let's first plot into the graph this is the critical region here since it's a right tail test we will have rejection region on the right side so if it falls in this region we reject the null hypothesis and it falls in this region we fail to reject the null hypothesis now let's go back to chi square table for calculating this value for calculating chi square we alpha is 0.05 and n is 13 minus 1 so we get 12 so we need to find this value of chi in the chi table 0.05 and 12 so on the top you will have 0.05 and degree order freedom on the this side so we get chi critical value as 21.026 now since it is a right tail test so it will be a positive value now let's calculate the chi stats value n minus 1 into s square divided by variance square we put all the values as 13 minus 1 the samples into 6.82 as new variance divided by old variance of current so we get value as 13.1 if we represent this value in that distribution we get we fail to reject the null hypothesis because this value is less than 21.06 and falls in the fail to reject null hypothesis region so we can say there is insufficient evidence to conclude that the variance for this critical region has increased significantly at point o level alpha of significance so we fail to reject the null hypothesis so that is all i have on this video if you like it click here to subscribe do hit the like button as well share this video with all your friends on different social media platforms and if you have any specific sessions or topic for my next video you can let me know in that comment section below and please let me know your thoughts as well on this particular video